John chapter 4, verse 34, is where Jesus says that my meat is to do the will of him that sent me and to finish his work. And that, that's a weighty statement. I want to uh, consider and, and connect that uh, to uh, a few specific uh, times in Jesus' uh, ministry, not, well, not just his ministry, but his life uh, in, in the world. This, is, this can be uh, considered as like a, a banner over his, his entire uh, life in this world. My meat is to do the will of him who sent me. And it's not a, it wouldn't be a stretch to connect everything he said and did to that banner, to this text. Because it was his meat to do uh, the will of, he said, I connect, just think about that. And that's another way of saying, I always do those things that please the Father. It was his meat. It was sustaining to him. There, um, I, I love how many uh, parallels and allegory type connections uh, are made between the salvation economy and, and the creation. And I've said this before, but I, I just enjoy the thought that when God created this world, he was really thinking about salvation, not the world. And so you have... Uh, uh, Allegories of newness of life every spring built into the creation and the uh, allegories of, of newness of life and the metamorphosis of, of the uh, caterpillar to the butterfly and, the, and like the, you see the new birth and the tadpole to the frog and just different. It's just, it's just everywhere you see it's permeated. And so when Jesus says my meat is to do the will of him that sent me, well, the, Lord, the Lord's helping us along to see this this incredibly profound statement that Jesus made by making our existence depend on meat. Doesn't that help you to, to get a, get a hold of this, that if, if Aaron doesn't eat, Aaron won't do much. And now to my meat is to do the will of him. Yeah. So yeah. what sustain, what did he have to have do the will of God mm -hmm. to do the work of God? He had he had to have that. He had to do it. It was sustaining to him. It was essential to him. It was not a, it was not a, a, a sideline. Mm -hmm. It was not, uh, well, while I'm here, I'm, I'm, I'm going to do this. There's, there, was nothing, there was no aspect of Jesus' life that he was like taking a tour of the world. Just for novelty, the creator goes into the creation and sees what it's like. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. What his meat was to do the will of him who sent him and to finish his work. And when it was done, he left. And he won't come again until he comes to destroy it. Yeah. Now, here's an interesting point that I, I thought of just a few minutes ago. In, uh, J Jesus also said this, that man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceedeth out of the mouth of God. Mm -hmm. And I'd never, I had never connected that statement to Jesus' statement, my meat is to do the will of him who sent me. Yeah. But do you see a connection yeah. there? Yeah. Now, he didn't say, I live by every word that proceedeth out of the mouth of God, although that would be true because he, he uh, took upon him, uh, or the, the, not, he was not made like angels, he was made like the, uh, took upon him the seed of Abraham. Mm -hmm. And so in, in one light that, that is true, but I, I think the thought that arrested me was that we live by, not by bread alone, but by every word that proceedeth out of the mouth of God, but Jesus, not, it's him, his, his meat is like a step above that. Mm -hmm. His meat is to do the will of him who sent him and to finish, finish his work. It's like, it's like the same principle of us living by every word of God, except it's, it's larger and deeper and more profound in Jesus' case. His meat is to do the will of him who sent him and to, and to finish his work. Here's some examples of this, John 4.34. As a 12-year-old boy in the, uh, in the temple in his answer to his parents. Don't, did, would, didn't, don't you know that I must be about my father's business at 12 years old? Mm -hmm. yeah. it, we don't have much information. We've got, we've got uh, quite a bit. You know, Luke wrote about his infant days and the, and the events surrounding it of Herod seeking his life and angel appearing to, jo uh, to Joseph and, and they, they fled because they sought his life and the angels and the shepherds and and the inn and things like this, but then nothing from there to 12 years old. And then just one instance, this instance at 12 years old, and then it picks up again at about 30 years old. 
And so we, the, the uh, gospel accounts of Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John are not uh, exhaustive biographies. They're revelations of who Jesus is. And that event at 12 years old was key. Yeah. And so the Holy Spirit put it in the record. And so you have to conclude that we, we, we don't, we're not missing anything that essential That's right. to, to be accepted to live before God. We have what is necess- what, what we need to know, what we have to know, and, and that my meat is to do the will of him who sent me. That started early on. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Jesus knew, don't you know that I must be about my father's business? The uh, inaugural uh, Sabbath day there that Jesus, uh, in a way, began his ministry at his hometown in the synagogue when he asked for the scroll of Isaiah, mm-hmm. and he read the prophecy that he... The, he read the prophecy of himself that he himself would fulfill. Mm-hmm. No man, <laughs> no other man can read a text like that. Amen. And he read it and said, this day, uh-huh. this prophecy is fulfilled in your hearing. Came to, his meat was to do that will uh-huh. and to finish that work. And he knew, he knew that it wasn't, it wasn't <laughs> done right then. And he... He knew that it was the things that would uh, that would be against him, and the things that would that he would encounter. He knew it, but it was his meat to do the will of him, him who sent him. So doing the will was not just a formality. It was not uh, Jesus pretending to be weak, weak and pre- pretending to be burdened, and 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 this this kind of thing. He really it was his. He had to be sustained because he really did take on him the form of a servant. Right. He really did empty himself. And so when he slept in the boat, he wasn't just acting like he was sleeping so that they, would, they wouldn't know. Uh-huh. You know, it wasn't that he really did partake of the same. So his, it was his meat to do the will of him who sent me. Here, here's a couple of examples of this in the negative form. Who made me a ruler and a judge over you? There are things he refused to be involved in uh-huh. yeah. because it didn't have anything to do with the will of God yeah. and with the work that God gave him to do. And so technically speaking, somebody brought that up, this example up here in our midst not too long ago. Technically speaking, he is the ruler and he is the judge. But with these two brothers, he said, who made me a ruler and a judge over you? Yeah. He refused to be drug into it because it wasn't part of the work that God gave him to do. But overall speaking, he was their judge, wasn't he? <laughs> and he is. But he refused to be involved in it because it, didn't, it wasn't the work of God. Mm-hmm. That's not why God sent him. Right. He, and his meat, his meat is to do the will of him who sent him. Here's another example of the, on the, the negative side of this. Uh, Jesus, your mother and your brother, sir, yeah. outside seeking for you. Well, again, technically speaking, even um, you know, biologically speaking, he wa- she was his mother, mm-hmm. and they were his brethren. But ultimately speaking, he said, who, who's my mother? Who are my brethren? And he refused to go out because that that draw or that pull was not part of the work that God gave him to do. And so he refused to be involved in it. Mm -hmm. Now, it wasn't that he neglected his mother because even on the cross, he committed her care Uh to John the Apostle. That was part of the work. Mm -hmm. But you see how how focused and how discerning Jesus was. G, uh, maybe maybe a counselor would have taken that, the instance of those two brothers and said, "This is a this is a teaching opportunity." But Jesus just refused. Yeah. He just refused to be involved in it because his meat was to do the will of him, him who uh, sent me, Amen. sent him. At one point, one of the gospel writers said he set his face steadfastly to go to Jerusalem. Mm-hmm. wasn't wasn't anything. The torches in the garden wasn't going to intimidate him. Yeah. The great drops of blood weren't going to intimidate him. He he knew. He knew that the he said he prayed. Yet if it be possible, mm-hmm. see his meat was to do the will. So if it be possible, let this cup pass from me. Yet not my will, but thine be done. Uh, my because his meat was to do the will, mm-hmm. the will. Of, and so he knew what he was, what he was about to taste of. Mm-hmm. But he uh, he was sustained by it. But doing the work God gave him to do. Mm-hmm. 
And of course, the the grand conclusion of all these things is uh, his last words on the cross. It's finished. Yeah, right. The work God gave him to do, uh-huh. it was finished. The work in the earth, of course, he's still working. Yes, sir. Yeah. And he will, I conclude, just being familiar with the divine way, he will always be working yeah, because right. God always works. Uh-huh. Jesus always works. Uh-huh. The, the, the half hasn't been told. We could say the 64th hasn't been told. Uh-huh. We, we just, we're, just, we're just like in kindergarten learning these things and the the things that we're able to articulate are are uh, when we when we look back when we're in glory and we look back we'll, we'll marvel at the patience that the lord has had with us in our in our walk in our walk of faith so remember these things as we come to this table it, it is his meat to do the will of him who sent me and to finish his work father in heaven we're